I'm Jeff Barr. Today I'm speaking with Sandy Carter, Vice President of Windows on AWS. Welcome. Thanks, Jeff. It's great to be here. Happy to have you. So I know hundreds of thousands of our customers across all industries have Microsoft workloads running on AWS. Why did they make that choice? Well, there are a couple of reasons that customers tell us that they chose to run those Windows workloads on AWS. Um, the first one is better reliability, and this is what we're hearing across the board. Many of those Windows workloads are mission critical, and so reliability really matters. And Jeff, you and I both know that our availability zones in our regions have availability and reliability built in from the very start. We didn't go back and re-architect, we architected it that way from the very beginning. Um, secondly, we know that especially SQL Server customers are really interested in price performance, and we run two to three times faster SQL Server workloads on AWS than the next nearest cloud provider. And that performance really makes a difference because our customers' customers see that impact, so it's really helping them with their customer experience. Um, and then we see the fact that the breadth and the depth of what AWS has to offer is really important. So we had a customer like Just Eat, a large um, customer out of the UK, who migrated all their SQL workloads over to AWS, and then they're able to use that data to build a corpus of knowledge that helps drive their work with Alexa and uh, Amazon Fire as well. Okay, so they're taking their their original Windows workloads, they bring them to the cloud, but then they can also start taking advantage of other parts of AWS, it sounds like. That's right, so you know, part of that breadth and depth is that customers have not just Windows workloads, but they've got SAP workloads and IBM workloads and VMware workloads, and so they're able to not just bring the Windows workloads over, but we're a first class citizen for all of those workloads. Okay. And in fact, you know, for Windows workloads, um, there are two times as many Windows Server instances that run on AWS for Windows in the cloud than the next nearest cloud provider. Okay, so, so a lot of customers have picked us for that. Th that's actually really impressive. So what does that mean in terms of other folks who are considering moving their workloads to AWS? Yeah, it's interesting because at a lot of our EBCs, a lot of customers will say, well, that's great for you, but what does it mean for me? Um, and I love you know, Andy's quote, which is, there's no compression algorithm for experience. And that's really what it means, is that we've been running Windows longer than anyone else over 10 years. So we are able to optimize networking and storage for performance. We are able to innovate in ways that others can't because of that experience level. So it really does make a difference for our customers, not just for, for us. Now, if one of our listeners is already running Windows on-premises, let's say, what kind of pain points do you think that they're feeling right now that they might be able to remedy by moving to the AWS cloud? Well, I think one is that reliability. You know, if you look at the numbers from 2018, um, the next nearest cloud provider had seven times more downtime mm. hours than we did. So just with the complexity and everything, that reliability really comes through as a pain point. Cost also comes through as a pain point. So, uh, you know, if you just picked up your on-premises workloads and moved them over, you would actually be running a higher bill. You have to optimize those. And the reason is that most customers running on-prem have over-provisioned their Windows workloads. So SQL Server, for instance, on average is 35 to 40% over-provisioned. So that means you're paying for stuff that you're not using. And then there are some other really compelling events out there that make a difference too. So end of support uh, is right upon us in July for SQL Server, and then for Windows Server, end of support comes in January of next year. So customers are having to make a decision about how do I upgrade, and as I upgrade and do something that big, do I just want to migrate over to the cloud? All right, so that over-provisioning actually has me intrigued. So it seems to me <laughs> that when you're running licensed workloads in the cloud, you maybe pay pay almost double for the over-provisioning. You're paying first for the extra hardware resources, but maybe you're paying for software licenses that were meant for l larger, more storage, more cores, and so forth. Is, is that how it works out in practice? Yeah, it's really interesting because, um, in fact, we were just looking at a SharePoint customer today, and they had over 5,000 workloads in SharePoint. But the ones that were actually being used, there were only 1,000. So they're actually paying for all that storage for 5,000, all the storage and everything that you need, SQL Server licenses, 
for 5,000 different sets of files that they're sharing, but they're only actually using 1,000. So it's multiplied out in maybe three dimensions. Yeah, then. storage, hardware, licenses. I mean, it's just incredible. Pretty cool. Okay, so I know that at AWS, we, we always talk about innovation, our pace of innovation, and the fact that we're always inventing new things on behalf of our customers. What have we done for our Windows customers? Well, uh, one of the ones that I'm really excited about is something that we introduced at reInvent called License Manager. Now, it wasn't like super sexy, like our deep racer and that kind of thing, but so far, over 2,000 customers, 68,000 accounts are using License Manager. And here's why. If you think about License Manager, one of the biggest issues that we hear from customers is how do I manage all of my Windows licenses? Actually, not just Windows and Microsoft, but IBM and SAP and Oracle. And so License Manager enables you to track and see all of your licenses on-prem and in the cloud. But what's really cool is we were able to embed into the AWS control plane, so we can actually block a customer from launching a new license that they weren't supposed to launch. So let's say they had purchased 200 SQL Server licenses. If, a, if someone tries to launch 201, we can block it so you don't have to pay for that extra license. And, and the important thing is, at first, you could hear blocking and think that's a negative, but my understanding is if you over-consume on licenses, you might open yourself up to some kind of liability. Audit. And... Yeah, that's right. Or if you want to, you don't have to block it, but it keeps track of it. So let's say that you had 40 Oracle database licenses, but you wanted your, your internal customers to be able to go up to 50 or 60. You can allow them to go over, and that will enable you to do a true up to Oracle. So to you know, therefore make sure they're okay during an audit. Okay, so, so, it's so you super make sure valuable. that you're using, you've purchased the right number of licenses, and you're you're keeping yourself safe, but fully provisioned for what you actually need to do. Right, but this is and this is really important both from a technology perspective, but also for the business user, because um, we were just talking to a customer. They said they had a team of seven people. Imagine seven people just tracking all these licenses. And so now he said it's completely replaced with license manager. So now those seven people can actually do coding. Mm. They can actually be builders and do really cool things. So he said not only did it save him money, but his morale has now go up on his team sure. because they're not tracking these licenses. Uh, but that's just one thing that we introduced. We also introduced um, managed AD with cross VPC and cross account access. This is a really big deal, because a lot of customers, Jeff, don't know that we actually have Active Directory on AWS. And many Despite customers Despite all my blog posts, they still don't know? I know, <laughs> they should read your blog post. Uh, but it is interesting, right? They're, they're, um, so we do an AD connector, as you know. We have lift and shift of AD, and we also have managed Active Directory. With the improvements that we announced at reInvent, we've got some really large customers who are just moving everything that they're doing over to Active Directory. Uh, and then we also announced FSX for Windows, which is not only uh, conforming to the Windows protocols SMB, actually runs on Windows Server, but it's wicked fast. So not only are we seeing lift and shift for those files, but we're also seeing new customers come on board, like media companies who need that speed for live streaming video, that sort of thing. Um, and then we've got a couple other things like SQL tools for SQL Server to get SQL Server from Windows to Linux because SQL Server now runs on Linux, which is really cool. So you get better security, lower cost, and we can also help you with that end of support. So we purposely put together a tool where you can take SQL Server 2008, you can bring it over to the cloud, and then upgrade it. It enables you to run in parallel in compatibility mode, so you can make sure everything's okay, and then you switch over. So it's really powerful. We got lots of customers doing that today as well. I love this because this really says that we're we're looking at very specific kind of point level challenges that our customers face, and saying you're running Windows 2008 or Windows Server 2008. Yeah. You need to upgrade. Let us make something very particular, very custom to help you accomplish that upgrade. Right, and I, I will say, Jeff, you know, um, working backwards for the customer, I know we all talk about that, but, but this team has really done that. They really listened specifically to our Windows customer needs so that when we bring that over to AWS, they have a seamless experience for .NET. Um, we are addressing points that come about because SQL Server is going out of support. So it is very much working backwards from the customer. Even for License Manager, um, I personally talked to 141 customers about 100 partners, just to make sure we got that thing right. 
um, again, making sure we meet all those needs of our customers. Super important to listen to our customers, isn't it? It is. I think so. So we've been doing Windows on AWS for a really long time, 2008, I think you said. Yep. Uh, despite all that we've done to share what it is and how it works, are there still misconceptions out there about what's going on? Yes. So um, I still have a lot of customers who will say, wow, Windows came from Microsoft. Maybe we should just run it on something else. So, um, you know, people don't realize how many customers 2X run on AWS than anywhere else. Uh, we also hear, in fact, I heard this just yesterday, oh, I've got Office 365, therefore I have to use the Active Directory that comes with Office 365. But in reality, you don't. Uh, in fact, there's been a couple of blog posts about how you can use Managed Active Directory, and that gives you a lot of additional benefits, reduced cost being one of those as well. Um, and then I hear a lot of times where customers will say, well, AWS only supports all in. You know, my board said I have to use another cloud or, you know, something else has to be done so I can't go all in, therefore I can't go to AWS, which as you know is not the case. We have many customers who are going all in, it's just going to take some time to get there, or they want to run hybrid cloud, in which case we can help them with VMware cloud on AWS, which enables them to migrate over their SQL server workloads. We definitely give them a lot of options. Yes, a lot of options. Okay, now returning to customers, you've mentioned a couple, but um, give me some other ideas of what our customers are doing, what, what they're running on AWS, maybe how they've brought their existing workloads to AWS. What, what's happening in that space? Um, so it's really interesting. So eMarketer, which uh, you know publishes all kinds of great data for marketers out there in the world, um, was actually running on another cloud provider. And they were having some problems with reliability and their customers were trying to get data, and because of the lack of reliability, they couldn't get access to the data. Also, it turns out that their costs were too high, and so they looked for some alternatives, and they decided to migrate over everything that they're doing onto AWS. And the exciting thing is, not only are their customers happier, but they also have seen 35% cost savings and about a 4X faster launch time. So they're now true believers. They actually spoke with me at reInvent on the stage to just explain not only why they did that migration, but also how they did that migration as well. The other customer, Jeff, I wanted to tell you about is Ryanair. And Ryanair had some of their marketing campaigns on Microsoft SQL Server. Um, as they, again, their builders got comfortable with running SQL Server in the cloud, they decided to move that over to Aurora and now they can run one of the largest email campaigns in Europe with higher performance at just a fraction of the cost, sending out 22 million emails daily to customers about their travel bookings and their sales events as well. So it's really interesting to see how all these customers, not just Ryanair, but Expedia, Dow Jones, they get SQL Server over to the cloud, and then many of them decide they want to go with a database that was designed for the cloud, which is a tenth of the cost, to do more things. Many stay there, but many also modernize as well. That's a great story. Well, Sandy, we're just about out of time, but this has been absolutely fascinating. Really learned a lot about how we're letting our customers really benefit from running Windows and AWS. Thanks so much for taking the time to do this. You're welcome. I've been speaking with Sandy Carter, Vice President of Windows on AWS. I'm Jeff Barr. Thanks so much for watching.